I call Baroness Northover to ask the first oral question. I beg leave to put the question standing in my name on the order paper. Minister. My Lords, we are deeply concerned by the situation in Hong Kong. China's new national security law breaches the Sino-British Joint Declaration and di directly threatens a number of Hong Kong's rights and freedoms. Early reports of the law's initial implementation are also troubling. We will not look the other way on Hong Kong, and we will continue working with partners to hold China to its international obligations. Baroness Northover. I thank the Noble Lord the Minister. What prospects are there for fair and free elections in Hong Kong this autumn? And what steps is the government taking to assist young activists like Joshua Wong, who are not BNO passport holders? Minister. My Lords, the situation of elections, obviously there have been elections even this year at local level. We continue to impress upon the Hong Kong authorities and the Chinese authorities to ensure that the one country, two systems is sustained, maintained, and indeed strengthened. However, recent events have indicated otherwise, and we continue to lobby both administrations in this respect, including protecting those peoples who are not and do not qualify for BNO status. I now call Lord Dubbs. My, my Lord, um, the minister will be aware of the statement by the Chinese ambassador a few days ago that we were, in, we, we were interfering in China's internal affairs. Will the minister make it clear that this is a entirely a breach of the Sino-Chinese, uh, of the Sino-British agreement, and that it is not a breach of, chi of, of uh, Chinese international affairs to stick by the terms of an international treaty? Will the minister ensure that the widest number of countries in the world take our position of understanding and give us support? Minister. My Lords, I totally agree with the Noble Lord. The one country, two systems, and the agreement that we also signed with the Chinese authorities is registered with the UN. China is a P5 member. It has international obligations. And therefore, we do believe standing up for the rights of Hong Kong nationals as well as BNOs is absolutely the right thing to do. And I assure the Noble Lord, we work with international partners to ensure we get broad support for the United Kingdom's position. And indeed, as we've seen recently at the Human Rights Council, that is the case. Lord Purvis of Tweed. Uh, my Lords, there was cross-party support for the Foreign Secretary's uh, shock at seeing the persecution of minorities in China and the suppression of peaceful protesters in Hong Kong. Uh, but people may also be shocked to know that the government has given export licenses for British-made tear gas, which has been used, according to Amnesty International, against peaceful protesters in Hong Kong, and government export licenses for spyware, wiretapping and surveillance technologies. Will the Minister ensure that the UK strategic export control lists are now updated to ensure that no British-made technologies can be used in the suppression of minorities or, indeed, for peaceful protesters in Hong Kong? Yeah. Minister. My Lords, as I'm sure the Noble Lord has noted, my right honourable friend, the Foreign Secretary, made a statement uh, yesterday in the House which also has extended the issue in terms of our own embargo on arms sales, which was to mainline China, which will now also be applied to Hong Kong. I now call Lord Mackay of Clashburn. My Lords, the appointment of senior judges to give service in Hong Kong is an important part of its international character. What are the prospects of that continuing? Minister. My, my Lord, uh, my noble and learned friend raises rightly this important issue. As we've seen with the recent announcements, the actual appointment of judges has passed to the chief executive. But we also note the important announcement of Lord Reid, which made clear in the statement of Friday, 17th July, that whether this practice continues depend on whether such a service remains compatible with judicial independence and the rule of law. Lord Carrington. While supporting the actions of the government, I urge it to consider the ordinary people, as well as companies in Hong Kong, who accept the new security law in order to make a livelihood. Please could the Minister confirm that any action taken by the government is proportionate and supports the rights of both the Hong Kong people 
and British and other companies operating there, like the Hong Kong Bank, Standard and Chartered, Swire and Jardine, to go about their normal lives and businesses in this changed environment without gratuitous criticism and recrimination. Minister. My Lords, I would draw the noble Lord's attention to the opening paragraphs of my right honourable friend, the Foreign Secretary's statements, which again stress the importance that we see China as an important strategic partner. And we believe China has a very positive role to play on the international stage, but it must fulfil its international obligations. I cannot speak for private companies, but our, our challenge is not with the private companies or indeed with the normal citizens of Hong Kong. We believe that they have a right to respect and be right to have their uh, rights respected by the Hong Kong administration and the Chinese authorities, and that's what we're standing up for. Lord Collins of Highbury. My Lords, at the beginning of June, the Foreign Secretary suggested that the new Magnitsky powers might be an option in respect to the police brutality and other actions in Hong Kong. Yesterday, in respect to the national security legislation, he said that we will patiently gather evidence which takes months. But what of the clear evidence of Chinese officials involved in forced organ harvesting and the oppression of the Uyghur people? Does the noble lord, the minister, agree that the government should accelerate the timetable for Magnitsky sanctions to be imposed on Chinese officials involved in such persecution? Minister. My lord, I have already made clear on a number of occasions my strong concern and indeed the fact that Her Majesty's Government have raised the issues of what's happening with the Uyghurs and other minority communities within China. On the issue of the Magnitsky sanctions specifically, the noble lord will respect the fact that it's not right to speculate on what future designations may be. Call Lord Chiji. My lords, the minister will be aware that Hong Kong is just one of the UK's responsibilities in the Indo-Pacific region shared or otherwise, which include, for example, the Korean Peninsula and the five power defense arrangement protecting Singapore and Malaysia. In the context of global Britain and the reversal of the East of Suez policy, would the government provide details of our international obligations for Hong Kong and the region and confirm it has the funds and capacity to meet them? Sir. My Lords, we, we believe very strongly in a strong, stable and safe uh, Indo-Pacific region. We have stood up for Hong Kong on the rights of principles and on the rights of believing that, and very strongly and with the uh, sense of law with us on the importance of standing for that agreement, which is deposited at the UN. On wider responsibilities, we continue to work with international partners in pursuit of those objectives. Baroness Bennett. My Lords, I declare my position as co-chair of the All-Party Parliamentary Group on Hong Kong. Uh, can the Noble Lord, the Minister, tell me what steps um, the UK government is taking to protect students from Hong Kong and students um, who might be supporting the rights of people in Hong Kong in British universities, given that there's significant evidence of intimidation and also what protection will be provided to academics and institutions standing up against such efforts? Minister. My Lords, the answer is a simple one. Anyone who breaks the law in the UK and hounds students or attempts to intimidate students, they will be held to account according to the law of the land, which is our law. Baroness Hooper. My Lords, I join with those who press further on the main issues relating to Hong Kong, on the um, breaches of the joint declaration, on the threats uh, to freedom of speech and assembly, uh, and uh, the need for democratic elections. But my specific question today to the Minister is to ask uh, if any talks have gone on at Commonwealth level uh, in relation to the situation in Hong Kong, particularly as Hong Kong was once part of the Commonwealth as a former overseas territory. And this could be particularly relevant as far as young people and students are concerned uh, who may wish to pursue their studies in, in not only in the UK but in other parts of the Commonwealth. Minister. My Lords, let me assure my noble friend, we work with all partners through the G7 and within that context at the UN and countries such as Australia, New Zealand and Canada amongst Commonwealth nations are supportive of the UK government's position. 
I now call Lord Craig. My Lords, will loyal veterans of Her Majesty's Hong Kong Military Service Corps, still living in Hong Kong, who have long petitioned Her Majesty's Government for right of abode in UK, be granted this now? Will their request for full British passports, which all other members of the Corps retained before 1997, be agreed, in line with the statutory provision for fairness in the military government? Minister. My Lords, the noble and gallant Lord has raised this issue consistently and regularly, both with myself and my noble friend, Minister of State, at the Home Office. I have written since our last exchange to the Home Office, and I am awaiting a reply in this respect, and I will update the noble Lord accordingly.